Hi guys, today's video is one that I feel like a lot of you are going to be quite interested in because we're going to be testing out a very hyped brand, a brand that I have seen all over social media for quite some time now, probably like two years I've seen people make videos with this brand and I've also seen a lot of people post sponsored videos with this brand and that always makes me go, hmm, I wonder if this is really as good as they say. So we're talking about fluorosis or fluorosis. I'm going to say fluorosis. Not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but this is a brand that is most well known for their extravagant, super beautiful packaging with amazing imprints in their, uh, their products. And it's all about the aesthetic. And I feel like that is the thing that gets pushed about this brand, not so much like the performance of the actual products. And I have seen people that I trust do sponsored videos with them. And even though everything that comes out of their mouths are always very positive, me watching their application of the products have never really impressed me. So I'm, I'm interested to see if I'm going to like these products. They did send me these in PR. This is not sponsored at all. I've had this package for, I don't even know how long, probably like two months. And I've been meaning to do something with it, but I just haven't gotten around to it until a few days ago, I was watching Karen Harris and she did a video trying out this brand because she also had had the same package for a while apparently. And it kind of just reminded me. And I was also very impressed by the performance in her video. Like she seemed to really like everything. Everything seemed to look really nice on her. So I'm interested to see if I'm going to like these products as well. So we're gonna test it out. We're gonna see if the hype is real, if these are just beautiful products or if they actually perform well too. So let me show you the things that they sent me. So. I already have one thing on my face today and it's a loose setting powder. Now, I'm not someone who's very good at reviewing powders, so I didn't wanna do like a first impression. I'm gonna keep playing with this. So far, it performs like a powder. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Like I said, I'm not someone who tries a lot of powders. It set my makeup, it was nice, it didn't leave a white cast, and I think that the packaging obviously is really, really beautiful. I will say all of these are plastic, so they don't feel very heavy, they don't feel luxurious per se, but they also don't feel cheap. But just keep in mind, it is plastic packaging, uh, but the attention to detail is beautiful. The puff is really nice. I didn't use the puff, not really a puff person, uh, but I do like the, the amount of products that come out of the puff. I do find this thing to be kind of annoying and just like an extra step in order to be able to use the powder. Like I prefer loose powders that just have like an attachable lid that I can dump the powder into. Like that is just my preference. But if you like, um, like, powders with a sifter and you like using a puff, maybe you would like this. I found that putting the brush in here, powder kind of just like flew everywhere. So a lot comes out, which is a good thing, but it also just kind of gets everywhere. So just wanted to put that out there. As for the performance, like I said, it seems like it looks nice. I don't see really any difference between this powder and the powder that I normally use, which is my uh, Wet n Wild Loose Setting Powder. But Again, I'm not a powder expert, so I'm not going to give you like a review of that yet. I'm gonna keep using it. Uh, if you wanna know like a more in-depth review on it or like my future thoughts, I guess, watch my Makeup Diary series where I show you basically everything that I use on my face every day and just kind of like sum up how I feel about things as I go. Uh, the next thing that they sent me, we're gonna test this out. So this is a face palette. Uh, it has a blush, a bronzer, highlighter, and a like a light, I don't even know how I would use this powder. It almost looks like a bit of a banana powder. It's got a bit of a yellow tint to it. Not the kind of powder that I would normally use personally, but all of these colors seem like they're going to work really nice on my skin tone. Now, I think this is the only color that they have. I could be wrong. I hope they have others with darker colors in them, but this one is definitely going to work for me. And when I swatched it, swatched beautifully. Uh, the highlighter didn't swatch the absolute best, but again, it's a highlighter, so like, you need to actually use it on your face to see what it's going to look like. I'm excited to test this one out. I think it's gonna work really nicely for me. And they also sent me a lipstick, which the packaging is just so extra. <laughs> like I think is really, really cute. I love the attention to detail as always. It comes with a little thing on the bottom here that you can, you can take off if you don't want to keep this on here. Uh, the only thing that's a little annoying is if you have long nails, the way to open this is you have to press this button uh, on this side. No, it is on. Yeah, on this side. So there's a button here that you kind of have to press and sometimes it's a little bit hard if you have long nails and then the lipstick is in here and it looks absolutely beautiful. Does this have a name on it? It's called M1311. <laughs> That's as far as the name that I can tell. And there is some beautiful imprint. If you have seen the Catkin, they have exactly the same 
uh, imprints in their lipsticks. So I'm curious to see if this is going to be the same thing. Uh, but I'm excited to try it. It looks really, really pretty. And the eyeshadow palette that they sent me as well, beautiful, beautiful packaging. Um, I will say when I swatched it, you guys know how I feel about eyeshadows. I need them to be pigmented. I want the most in my eyeshadows. And I felt like this was a little bit just lackluster in the swatches uh, compared to what I would normally go for. And I also think that the red shade in the middle is definitely more of a blush than a eyeshadow. It definitely swatched like a blush formula. It's quite uh, thin, doesn't have a ton of pigment. So I think that that one is going to be better used as a blush and I'm not going to use it on my eyes as an eyeshadow because I already know that this formula is not something that I'm going to like in an eyeshadow. So for me, the red shade is going to be a blush. The shade next to it, which is beautiful, I can see that being a really nice highlighter. The pan is kind of small, maybe a little bit hard to get like a highlighting brush into that one. Uh, but I think it's going to make for a beautiful eyeshadow and that's the one that Karen used in her video and she really liked it. The other shimmers, the green one, uh, this one and this one, they swatch kind of just more like a satiny metallic. It's a little bit more than a satin, but also not quite a metallic. I feel like they're going to look nice on the eyes. They're probably going to wear well. I feel like this is a just very sophisticated formula. It's something that I could see high-end brands coming out with, um, something that's marketed for more of a mature audience or someone who doesn't like as crazy makeup as me. So it's probably going to be kind of a toned down look, but I'm going to obviously put my own twist on things and see what we can come up with. So I'm actually going to start with uh, putting on the lipstick because my lips really need it. So I'm going to try to find a lip liner that's going to go with this color. I couldn't find any great matches really, so I'm just using my Natasha Denona, my perfect nude. Um, let's see, I'm going to give this a swatch on my hand before I put it on. Okay, very creamy. Doesn't feel like a matte. I can see it maybe drying down, but it does feel like a bit more of a a velvety satiny matte like something in between there so i'm gonna go ahead and see that is a really pretty color putting it on it definitely looks more like a, a matte lipstick and it does seem like it clings a little bit to some dry patches that i have i'm gonna go ahead and just remove a little bit of this and kind of just blot it Keep in mind, my lips are very dry right now, so if you don't have dry lips, probably won't be an issue. I think the color is beautiful. It does feel a little bit drying on the lips, but I think if I put like a lip balm or something underneath, it wouldn't be a problem at all. But I just wanted to test it on my like dry lips because a lot of my lipsticks work perfectly over my dry lips and it's not an issue, but I think the color is really, really nice. So I'm just going to leave this on for the rest of the video and I'll see how I feel about it towards the end. It's definitely a matte lipstick. I take back what I said when I swatched it because it swatched a little bit creamer on my hand than it went on to my lips. Um, let's try out the face palette. So I'm going to do um, probably all of these. So we're going to try, well, all of them except for the, like, the light powder, which I don't really know how to use. But I'm going to take this bronzer here and I'm going to use my refer brush that I like applying bronzer with. This is the PO9. It says PO9A because this is a prototype, but I think it's just the PO9. We're just gonna go ahead and see. Okay, that is a beautiful bronzer color. It's definitely more of a cool tone bronzer, leaning more towards a contour, but I think it's definitely usable as a bronzer. That actually looks really, really nice, and it's got a nice amount of pigment to it. I feel like it's more pigmented than I expected it to be which is not a bad thing at all. So I don't really do a lot of contouring or bronzing. I'm definitely more into blush. So this is the only place that I put bronzer and contour. I do not like doing anything underneath my chin because I've just seen too many people who's done that in real life and it looks ridiculous and I don't trust myself to blend it properly. So I just don't want to be one of those people. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try the blush. I'm excited. This color looks really nice and I think that together with the lipstick is going to be a really nice combination. Yeah, that's a really pretty color as well. I feel like this palette is like perfect for me when it comes to like the tones in it because these are colors that are, like I said before, pretty much perfect for me. And I'm excited actually to have this in my collection. I hope that I like the highlighter because this could be 
a travel palette for me for sure. But that is a beautiful blush. I like how it's not super pigmented, but it has enough pigment to it that I can build it up to be nice and pigmented. But you can also get more of a sheer application and it builds and blends really, really nicely. I will say so far I'm impressed with this little thing and like I said, I really hope I like the highlighter in here. If you're someone who likes to use really large brushes for your bronzers and your highlighters and stuff like that, then this palette might be a little too small for you, but thankfully I'm someone who I like using smaller brushes. So my brushes fit very nicely into here. Like you can see, this is the blush brush that I use. I have a very small face. Uh, so this is a pretty small brush for what other people use. So just keep in mind like the sizes of the brushes that you use. If you like using big brushes, this might be a little bit cumbersome to use, but for me, it's working out very nicely. I'm excited to try this highlighter. I didn't feel like it swatched the best, but a lot of the times I'm trying to find like my, ah, my unearthly highlighting brush. A lot of the times when highlighters don't swatch the best, I find they apply really nicely still. So I'm gonna use this brush, which is sort of a combination between a very fluffy brush and like the Sigma, uh, what is the number of that one? The one that like everybody always uses. I literally can't find it right now, but it's definitely more of a fluffy brush. So if I feel like the application is a little weak, I can easily go in with another one. It picks up really well though, like really. Okay, that's actually like so much better than I thought. It is a little on the light side uh, for what I would normally use, but I think that if I go over that again with a little bit of the blush, I can easily make that just like a tiny bit darker and pinker. That is a really nice, very smooth formula that kind of just melts into the skin. You know what? I kind of, I kind of get the hype uh, so far. The eyeshadows, <laughs> we're gonna have to try and I don't think I'm gonna like those as much, but this is a really, really nice product and I think the quality of this one is beautiful. I'm going to take a little bit more of that blush, like I said, because I just want to go over the tops of the highlighter a little bit just so I can darken the highlighter a bit because I don't like super like white base highlighters and I feel like it's a little too white for me, but the formula is really, really nice. Now let's try out the eyeshadow palette and see how I feel about it. I'm going to prime with my Natasha Denona eyeshadow base. Before I go in with the actual eyeshadows, I do want to just try this middle shade as a little bit of a blush so we can do some blush draping. I'm just going to take my same brush into this color and just go ahead and put a little bit of that just towards like my hairline here just to see. Yeah, you can definitely see that this is very much a blush formula. It doesn't have like a lot of sheen to it. It's very much just like a glowy blush. It doesn't have any sparkles, I mean, or any glitters or anything like that. You could probably use it as like a satin eyeshadow if you're into that. But as you can tell, it definitely doesn't have the pigment of an eyeshadow, which I can kind of tell when I swatch it. It does make for a beautiful blush though. I do like that. Now I know this is a lot of blush for most people. For me, this is like the perfect amount of blush. I think that looks really, really nice. And I think it's all going to come together. Uh, once I get some eyeshadows on. Now, this is of course going to be quite a neutral look because it's quite a neutral palette. There are, let's see, one matte, two matte, three mattes in here. They're all neutral. So I'm gonna go ahead and use probably the two darkest ones. I feel like this is a little too light to be a transition shade for me. So I'm gonna go in with this one right here on my refer 14. This does look to be like the perfect kind of transition shade. I'm just hoping that there is enough pigment in these two colors to get it as deep as I want it to be. A very, very smooth and creamy formula. It goes on quite nicely. It's on the buildable side for sure. I do like the color of this one. I think if you are someone who is more into, you know, very basic, quick and easy, everyday sort of makeup, you prefer your neutrals, I think this brand could definitely be for you. I think personally, eyeshadow wise, I don't think this is gonna be like my perfect eyeshadow formula, uh, just because, you know, the colors bore me a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I am in neutrals from time to time, but I want them to be just a little bit more uh, punchy and dramatic. And I feel like this is just 
more meant to do softer looks. I'm sure I'm going to get a beautiful look out of this that I'm really going to enjoy, but I'm also not really a look repeater, so I'm not gonna see myself, you know, reaching for this on a very regular basis, but I'm still, I'm having a good time with this, and I think that the formulas are, like I said, really, really nice. I don't have any complaints really so far. It just depends on if you are the uh, target audience, I guess, for this brand. And I think the only person who can know that for sure is you. But I mean, I feel like I got a decent amount of pigment with this color. I am blowing this out quite a bit because I do want this to be, like I said, when I do neutrals, I do want the look to be quite dramatic. I'm going to take the shade underneath my eye as well here. And I am going to try to deepen this up as much as I can using this dark brown on the very end. A little bit of kick up in the shadows. Nothing that really bothers me though. Okay, so I don't think that we're going to be able to get this super dark, but I do think I'm going to be able to add um, enough depth that I'll be okay with not bringing in anything else, but I would prefer if this just went a little bit darker. Also a very, very creamy, smooth, easy to work with, buildable formula. Not the most pigmented straight off the bat, but you can definitely get it to build to be pretty similar to like the depth in the pan. Like one of my concerns with these products were that just because the pans are so intricate, I kind of I wasn't, as well, maybe I was assuming that they would be a little bit just hard pressed so that, you know, they would be able to get those beautiful imprints in there. And with them being hard pressed, I thought that the pigment wouldn't quite be there, but they actually pick up really nicely on brushes. And as you can tell, I feel like I'm able to build it up quite well. It does take a little bit of time and like building, but it certainly does build and I'm not mad at this result at all. Just gonna connect that in the outer portion of my lower lash line here as well. Just going over the edges with that first shade to make sure I get a good blend here. And then we're gonna try the shimmers and see how they perform. I do think I wanna use that bluish green shimmer. I guess it's really just a green shimmer. I wanna see like how metallic I'm able to get that if I use my glitter primer with it because I do feel like it's got a decent amount of sparkle to it and I feel like I'll be able to pull that out by using my NYX glitter primer. So I'm just going to put my glitter primer on my lid before I go in with the shimmer. And with the sticky side of the brush I'm going to go into this shade right here which looks really really pretty. I'm excited to see what this looks like on the eyes. Picks up quite nicely. And I'm just going to use that basically on the middle and then pull it out. Okay, that's pretty. That is really, really pretty. It is a little more metallic than what I was expecting. And I do feel like I, I was able to pull out some of those little glitter particles in the shadow. I'm not going to take it all over my lid. I'm going to leave some room in the front here for that really, really pretty sparkly, uh, kind of light. It's not a champagne. It's almost more like a silver shade that looked more like a topper but I'm not mad at this. I think this looks quite nice. Okay, not bad, not bad. I'm gonna take the shade next and I am excited because when I saw Karen use this, it looked so beautiful on her. It is a little bit hard to just pick up here. This one seems a little bit hard pressed, but I also don't have any stick on my brush anymore. Okay, that looks really pretty. I just have to kind of dig in a little bit. That is beautiful. That's really pretty. I think I'm going to get a really nice blend between these two colors with this one as well. It's not as sparkly um, and kind of metallic as I was expecting, but it's definitely a really, really pretty eyeshadow. I do think I was right in my assumption that these eyeshadows are definitely more of a sophisticated formula and for someone who likes something a little bit more toned down but still pretty like I'm not mad at this I don't think this looks bad at all I just per personally per personally <laughs> for my own preferences would like for there to be a little bit more oomph in them but I think it looks nice I'm gonna go ahead and finish off um 
just with a look and then I'll come back and kind of sum up my thoughts because I definitely feel like I have some. My look is fully done and I gotta say I really like this. I think it looks beautiful and I think the little final touches kind of put it over the edge. I use a little bit of like a, a teal uh, water activated liner to do a little bit of a wing just on the outer corner just to sort of pull in a bit more of that teal shade that I had on my lid and I think this turned out really nice. I put on some small half lashes and that was pretty much it. I also used the tiniest amount of this shade right here just like right underneath my eye and I put some turquoise in my waterline so that's how I finished up. I didn't want to do anything that really like took over the look like I still wanted this to be the look that I did with this palette and I gotta say I like it. I think the formulas from Florazis are nice. My least favorite product is probably, I don't know. I feel like the lipstick, I am I need to keep trying this uh, for a little bit. Like I said, my lips are really dry and it is definitely clinging to like my dry spots. I'm not sure if you can really see that, but it doesn't look great up close. It feels very nice and comfortable though. And I, I can imagine it being quite long lasting. So. I'm not mad at the formula, I just need to prep my lips a little bit if I know that I want to wear this lipstick, but I don't think that I'm going to dislike it at all. I think the color is also really, really pretty and I like the packaging on it. Um, the powder I need to keep using for a little bit longer, but I will say I think my complexion looks really nice today and I think that mostly has to do with the face palette. I think the formulas in here are so, so pretty. They leave like a little bit of a sheen to them. They're not super matte, but they have just the perfect amount of pigment to them. If you're of my skin tone, I think you're going to love this. And the more I look at this highlighter, the more I'm like, that looks so, so nice. It's so natural, but still, it just looks beautiful. Like, I don't know what I, how else to explain it. I really, really like this palette, and I'm very happy that I have this in my collection. I can see myself using this a lot. The eyeshadows are probably not something that I'm going to be reaching for again, just because it's not my preference. It doesn't mean it's bad by any means. I think that everything performed really, really well. I think as long as you know what you're getting uh, when you go into this, and if you think that this is something that you're going to like, knowing what formulas are in here, I think you're going to love it. But for me, it's a little too wishy-washy and not like too... <laughs> I just want a little bit more, okay? Like, I'm extra, and I don't feel like this is extra, and I feel like this is for someone who doesn't want to be extra, and there's a lot of you out there, and I think this would be great for you, but for me, I don't see myself really pulling for this again. I can maybe see myself using the blush again. That is really, really pretty, and I enjoy that quite a bit. So those are going to be my impressions of the brand. Have you tried the brand? Have you been eyeing the brand? Is there anything from the brand that you're interested in? Do you think that this is something that is for you? And if the answer to that is yes. What is your normal makeup aesthetic? I would love to know like who exactly this is for and like if you have this and you love it, let us know as well because I feel like having a conversation in the, in the comment section is going to help other people uh, decide whether or not this is something that they want to test out. So I would say I'm, I like the quality of the products a lot and I think it's just a matter of preference when it comes to this brand. If you think you're gonna like it, you're probably gonna love it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see some other indie makeup uh, brand reviews, I'll put my playlist up on the screen. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.